it's the gear tester here and in this video i want to talk about why i personally don't like battle belts one little point i want to make here at the beginning of this video is we live in an age and a time in the united states at least where for about $2,500, you can get a lot of equipment and look like a special forces operator or SWAT team member or something like that. And just because you can purchase the gear and equipment doesn't mean that you have the skill set, the ability, or the backup to actually make, uh, actually take care of problems. And so what I, what I fear is happening is that people are basically purchasing suits of armor and whatever kind of camouflage they like and then feeling like because they look in the mirror and they look like a special forces operator they've got that skill set and that ability and i actually think that in many circumstances if if you actually are planning on wearing and using some of these items in an actual self-defense situation that you'd be better off blending in and looking more like a normal human being rather than being clad in just a whole bunch of multi-cam and having a bunch of gear that's pushed off from your sides, your holsters, your mag things pushed off rather than having them maybe in cargo pockets or just having them in a simple bag, having some backup uh, equipment in a bag like this and blending into your surroundings more looking like a regular civilian, which is actually what most, if not all of us, are. So this is a Viking Tactics Brokos belt, and inside of it I've got a... Uh, first Spear Assaulter's gun belt. And I think this is a great setup. So if you're looking for a battle belt, I think this is a great way to go. It's an older style of setup. A lot of belts are going with an inner Velcro belt, and with that, which has the hook on it, and then a smaller, thinner outer belt that has the loop Velcro on it, and you slap that on, and that's not going to move on you so much. This does move up and down. Uh, what I've noticed is whether or not people are going with kind of an, a large padded kind of kidney belt like this that can ride up and down a little bit or those inner and outer belts that velcro together or some form of keepers that a lot of people are still using a, a drop leg or some kind of a extended safari land holster with a thigh strap and that means that you you're getting the holster off your body further away from you <clears throat> further off okay this direction from your body which means it's easier to draw the holster and, and operate quickly but it also means that you're giving up concealability and you're just bumping gear and equipment further and further and further off your body so you're getting wider and wider and wider i recently went shooting with a couple young gentlemen that had all the rad cool new equipment and i was clearly the old guy in that group and one of them was carrying uh their most of their equipment inside the waistband and then threw on a chest rig uh, we all had chest rigs on the other guy threw on a battle belt and a chest rig and i noticed that the moment we were done shooting, he took his battle belt off. And maybe he had an inside the waistband holster, I'm not sure. But I noticed he took this whole system off. And so I do think I do think that a battle belt does have some good applications. So I just think we need to be realistic about our expectations and how we intend to employ gear and equipment. And if you have the right expectations and you allow those expectations and uh, demands to drive what you use, then you end up being happy with your gear and equipment. And so I'm not as happy with this because somehow in my mind, I imagine this being more concealable than it actually is. And so that's why I'm a little dissatisfied with this uh, system. So I do think that for home defense, if you're not in a state where you can conceal carry and maybe you're just in your pajamas or maybe you don't wear anything at night, to being able to stand up and throw a belt on that has uh, a pistol with a light on it, a couple extra magazines and maybe ammunition for a long gun, right, either rifle or shotgun, and maybe say things like an additional pair of keys and a flashlight, uh, a handheld flashlight, that that would be really, really good because you're not going to have your equipment on you. For me, what I struggle with is that I have a hard time integrating a battle belt with my regular EDC equipment. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here. But first, I do think that a battle belt does have some application for an individual who is planning on deploying it and using it for an extended home defense situation where it's not just a bump in the night, but... Maybe there's been unrest and problems in your area and you put this on so that you have some, some equipment ready to go. And because you're not a concealed carry permit holder or you choose not to conceal carry outside of the house, this allows you to get all your equipment, have it organized, ready together, and quickly put on. 
I also think competition, uh, things like three gun, maybe just a friendly competition with your friends. If you want to set this rig up, it's going to increase your chances. Again, uh, all the things I'm kind of complaining about bumping your gear and equipment off of your belt as being making it more uncomfortable to ride in vehicles and things does increase your chances of, of being able to move more rapidly as you do things like reloads and draws, because, uh, drawing your firearm, your, your, your sidearm, because that additional space does increase your, your, your speed rate because gear and equipment is more accessible to you and, and, and further away from your belt line. So we've got uh, home defense, extended home defense, we have competition and, tra and, and then like three gun, and then I would say training. Although I would caution you coming back to that idea of just buying all the Gucci gear and spending two, two grand or something to look like a special forces operator. Is that actually how you'd be operating or moving around in day-to-day -day life or even if things got kind of strange? Is that how you'd really want to be presenting yourself? Would it be better to just blend in with your regular surroundings, your regular neighborhood, and not suddenly be the multi-cam clad um, special forces LARPer. Does that make sense? And so when you're training, I, I think maybe it's a better option to not, uh, to, to minimize the additional gear and equipment we put in and on and try and use just your regular everyday stuff with some simple additions that integrate easily into your system. And for me, one of the things that kind of drives me crazy about this battle belt is I can't integrate it easily into my regular everyday carry stuff. I've already got, what, what does this belt do that my everyday carry system that I'm already using doesn't do? And so uh, recently I took a fighting rifle course and what I, what I chose to do is I carried all my regular EDC stuff and then I simply put a chest rig on. And what I found is it seamlessly throwing this chest rig on, this is a, I use an AK rifle for that class, but throwing this uh, SOE gear AK M4 micro rig on, so I had medical equipment, I had an additional pistol mag for my handgun of choice, and then I had four magazines. What I found is that seamlessly integrated with my regular EDC stuff. I didn't change anything else. And what I found is, I, although I didn't have all the Gucci gear, the simplicity of that system, just throwing the chest rig on that basically had my rifle stuff, medical equipment, and then an additional magazine for my pistol, meant that I performed... At a, more comfortably than many of the people that had a lot of fancy gear on, big tactical belts, additional other things, and they obviously didn't use that stuff regularly. And so, and one of the drills, some of the instructors started taking, undoing clasps and buckles and things, and they had a hard time messing with my belt and stuff. They, in fact, they didn't mess with it because I was just running a very simple leather belt with my holster as I regularly do on it. Whereas they were unclipping, you know, unclipping these buckles and people's belts were falling down or they were undoing thigh, thigh straps and people were having a hard time kind of doing the, the shuffle, trying to get their uh, pistol out of their holster. And it wasn't working as well as they'd intended. Uh, I think one, because they didn't use this, this gear as much as maybe they could have. And that's fine. This is one of their, maybe their first class. But secondarily, because all this stuff is kind of integrated and intended to be used together so you got to have this strap and this buckle and that thing and all this stuff done and it just think i think it i think it just ended up getting too complicated for a lot of people so what i find is that a chest rig if i'm if i am just needing to throw a chest rig on and maybe deal with problems maybe i'm going hunting uh any number of, of scenarios that probably a chest rig fits most people's need if you're going to go out and kind of be loud and visible that a chest rig integrates better with your everyday carry stuff um I just find that that works better for me personally, and that's maybe why I am unexcited about a battle belt. The other thing that I was that I found, and that I that is as I tried to set this up and use this here over the last couple weeks, is I found that I sometimes use this knife um, here. This is a Tops Mohawk Hunter, a great, durable, compact, lightweight fixed blade knife at nine ounces. I wear this just on my regular everyday leather belt. It's very comfortable, and I can hike all day with it just on my belt. So if I put this, I already generally have a pistol on me. I already have a mag or a couple of backup mags. And if I've already got this on my belt, then really, if I have cargo pants on, I could just drop a couple rifle mags into my pockets, and I look basically like I do every day. I look like a normal person. If I clip this belt around my waist and walk through my neighborhood, 
I don't look like a regular person. I can't blend in as easily. And you can say, well, once you've got a rifle out, it doesn't matter. I don't know. I just think we want to be, as a private citizen, as a citizen defender, defending property and, and, and the lives of my neighbors or my family or my friends in, in a very closed uh, kind of neighborhood or, or community area, the, the less I go about looking um, tactical or trying to look tactical, maybe that increases the survivability of myself and those around me. And, it, it, you know, you can ditch a chest rig and a rifle in the bushes if you need to. If it's a matter of having that stuff on and dying or ditching that stuff and, and walking and hiking out and, and maybe from a weight standpoint or from how you look standpoint not being singled out, that seems easier to me than have chest rig and belt and thigh rigs and all this kind of stuff just running kind of simple. And so what I found is, you know, my expectations, I was unrealistic about how I was going to use this stuff. This is a great belt. It is got the breathable mesh in it from Viking Tactics, okay? It's well designed. I like the first spear um, uh, gunfighter's belt, first spear assaulter's gun belt. And if you want to see a system or a setup very similar to this that's been used a lot, you could go over to Kit Badger's a YouTube channel, and I'll put a link to his video where he talks about individual components that he has on his Viking Tactics Battle Belt. And he's been a, a private military contractor, and he's used it a whole bunch, and I think for that application, it works great. But for my application as a citizen, uh, operating in my neighborhood, around my friends and family, I just find that a chest rig is a simpler option. Uh, it's maybe more concealable. A number of different companies now are coming out with simpler kind of, almost like a cummerbund with some shoulder straps. That, that are more concealable and that would allow you to be armed, have some additional magazines or radio, medical equipment on you, and maybe not be as visible. Um, and, and one thing I wonder about is if, if, if we're really planning on maybe using this stuff to defend ourselves, would we be better off having some stuff in our pockets, some stuff inside the waistband, and then a simple bag? Are we spending thousands of dollars on tactical nylon because we're following this dream of, of kind of a knight in shining arm or a, a modern version of that when really we'd be better off with just a simple pack like this old school camelback with some mags some water um and hearing pro in it and and we don't look scary and and if you if you don't look intimidating maybe you don't get into a fight uh so i, I you know a bag like that, maybe for home defense rather than a battle belt, you'd be better off just having a simple pouch or bag like this 511 bailout bag. And you've just got your gear and equipment and medical equipment set up in it, and it just sits in your closet. And maybe that's a cheaper, uh, you know, this bag is, what, $80, I think, right now. Maybe that's a cheaper, simpler option than uh, spending $150 for the Brokos belt the outer part of this, this kind of it's as, as strong and kind of durable as like a kidney belt for weightlifting um and then 75 or 80 dollars for the um first pair of soldiers gun belt you, you're already you're already up to 250 dollars before you throw anything on this and once you get stuff w woven into the molly and set up i don't find, I think you're going to want to take it off very much and i just wonder uh, are there better options for the citizen defender for the man or woman that's wanting to have a few additional items, extra mags, some medical equipment, maybe a, a fixed blade knife, are there better options for the citizen defender than a big, chunky battle belt? And I think the answer to that is yes. So maybe you want to save your money. Now, maybe you love your battle belt and you use it for training or you use it for competition or you've already got it set up just the way you want it and it's hanging in your closet right now and for, for home defense. And if that's the case excellent decision and if it works for you that's really what's important but for me and my application i find that i can't go shooting with my friends out in in the woods and then uh drive in the town and, and pop into the gas station and feel comfortable walking around with this thing on my belt but if i've got an outside the waistband holder with a shirt tucked over it it's not a problem at all i do think that there is a situation for the citizen defender where individuals we've seen this last year who have had to defend their place of business and maybe they live upstairs or in a little apartment connected to their place of business rather than be ruined financially have decided there's a number of members in the Asian community and there's a history of this from the 80s till the present time 
where members of the Asian community have been forced to band together to arm up and as a, a sub-minority defend their property and their lives from immediate violence. And in that case, it might be better to have a, a more overt presence, to have your weapons and equipment very visible and make a show of force. And in that case, maybe a show of force means that there is no fighting that day because people see that you're prepared and that you're willing to fight. But I think for most people, as, as you drive from point A to point B, as we go about our regular lives, we're probably better off blending in and being good citizens that have the ability to respond to excessive violence perpetrated by random uh, people, uh, violent people on, on a good citizenry. And so if you're trying to be a good citizen defender, I, I just think we need to be careful. Those of us who like the Second Amendment, those of us who, who like firearms, let's be careful that we don't unnecessarily scare or, or terrorize people by the way we look, by the way we talk, by the way we dress, by the way we behave. Let's be good citizens. And maybe having an inside the waistband handgun and a little bag like this to have additional equipment and gear with you, maybe that's the best option rather than trying to flaunt your power and your strength. You win 100% of the gunfights you don't engage in. You win 100% of the gunfights you don't engage in. So there, there are some of my thoughts on battle belts. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. I'm interested if you really love battle belts and you have a very simple a uh, compact battle belt system that is more concealable, I'd really like you to leave a comment down below. And I'd, I'd prefer that you made a video and left a link in the comments down below and kind of showed that off. So thank you guys very much for your views and your subscriptions.